啊，截稿日期再说一遍啊，截稿日期是七月二十四日，我们正在火热进行当中，所以大家快快来报名吧。我们的这个二维码就在屏幕上，也在我的背后，所以大家可以扫这个二维码来进行写作呃演讲大赛的报名。那么这是第一件事情。我们的十周年庆呢，还推出很多其他的活动啊，包括我们这个呃系列的讲坛。那我们接下来要推出来的是暑期小琵琶暑期俱乐部。我们的暑期俱乐部呢，是从七月十一日到八月二十日。嗯，我们的俱乐部包括两个大的。呃，方面一个就是写作，一个是读书。写作里边我们有亲子写作，那么这个呃部分呢是一到四年级的小朋友参加。呃，创意写作呢是五到十二年级的小朋友。然后我们的读书俱乐部，我们会读啊、呃《西游记》的绘本。然后名作欣赏这个读书俱乐部呢，我们会欣赏一些名家的作品。我们还有这个呃志愿者小朋友。参与的小琵琶共读的活动，这个是免费的，所以呃，特别希望所有的小朋友都能参与到我们的这个共读啊，还有我们的这些写作和读书俱乐部里来。我们追求的是有效和有趣。那我们的报名网站在这个 pipachinese.com， 或者呢，我们大家还可以现在就扫这个二维码来进行俱乐部的报名。所以我的背后有两个。报名的二维码，一个是我们的写作，大家都可以参与；然后另外一个呢是俱乐部的报名，俱乐部在八月份。啊、呃，我们的嘉宾来了吗 ？Yes， 啊、uh, ，OK， all right。所以接下来呢，就给大家介绍一下我们本期的嘉宾。OK， so tonight we're very excited to invite Dr. Iran Megan. Back to our online forum. Last year in November,、um, Dr. Megan、uh, gave us a speech entitled、um, "Helping."、Uh, it was helping your child build good habits. It was a very informative speech and received a lot of、uh, good feedbacks.、Um, tonight's topic, I'm pretty sure a lot of parents will be very interested. Again,、um, its title is "How to Become Your Child's Favorite Conversation Partner." Um, for those of you who、um, haven't met Dr. McGann,、uh, let me introduce him. Dr. McGann received his、uh, master's in education and PhD in psychology from Stanford University.、Um, he consulted nationwide to help parents and teachers form stronger relationships with their children and students. He's also the the founder and CEO of Early Alert, a wellness monitoring and suicide prevention service. All right.、Um, now let's、uh, welcome Dr. Megan. Let me stop here. Great.、Right. Hello. Thank you very much.、Um, and and welcome back to me. It's nice to see many people here. Some of you I know.、Uh, one of you I know a little better from before, and some of you I've seen in the past. It looks like most people don't have video on. Is this a fair assessment? Think so, and so yeah. If you're if you're so inspired,、uh, I invite you to turn on your video. So this way, also, I don't feel like you know I'm talking to to the void.、Um, but also, it's nice you know to see each other and to be able to ask questions of each other and and share thoughts. My understanding of the plan, and tell me if I have this correctly,、uh, is for me to be talking about this topic for you know as little as I can, basically. Uh, so maybe fifteen minutes, maybe twenty,、um, and then afterwards for us just to have a discussion, talk, and and ask questions if you have about this or about other things, and for people to be able to、um, share their own opinions and thoughts with other people.、Um, this this always is a nice thing. Is that roughly the plan? Does that sound right? Yeah.、Mm -hmm. Okay. If you're okay with it, then. I think we are. Let me、um, share my screen. One minute, please. Okay, here it is.
Okay, this is okay. You can see this. Yes. Okay, good. Um, so let me start. Oh, Jenny shared her video for a moment. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to start. If you have questions as I go, uh, I'm not planning to talk for, for a very long time, uh, like I said. And so if you have questions, you can put them in the chat um, and then we can go through them later and then we'll, we'll cover all of the questions. I think we will have time. So um, today I'm going to talk about how to be your child's favorite conversation partner because it's nice when they talk to us. Um, I will put the URL in the end again, but all, all the slides will be there. You can get it from the from the URL, so you don't need to be writing things very quickly. My email is there. I will put it also in the URL in case you want to uh, get in touch later. If you have a question that you'd rather not ask here or anything like that. Okay, to begin, uh, the first thing that I want to say is that we're all learning how to do this. Yeah, uh, so just just the fact that you're here and you're taking time to learn uh, and think about this already means that you are a wonderful parent, right? And trying hard to, to learn how to be an even better parent. So all that I think uh, is very important to remember because we're not we're not perfect and parenting can be very tricky sometimes. Also, um, you know, this slide is a is a reminder for me to to also say that. Everything that I'm saying here is, is a suggestion. I, I believe that it's a good idea based on what I've learned and based on what I've seen and experienced. If you don't agree with it, that's completely fine. I'm not, I'm not pretending to, to have the ultimate truth here. Um, so you know, if you don't like some parts of it and parts of it you do like, that's, that's completely fine. And I hope that you get something useful from this. So in general, when I think about interactions between um, any two people really, but also kids and adults, I think about the emotional intensity in a situation. And so when the charge is pretty low, people don't have very strong emotions. This is when we build, <clears throat> excuse me, we spend time building relationships. When the charge is a little bit higher and people have maybe even strong emotions, right? They're angry, they're afraid, they're jealous, they're, they're nervous, they're very happy or very proud, any of those count. Um, that's the time that we do supportive interactions. And then when, intensity is very high, that's a crisis and all the rules change really in a, in a crisis, we focus on making sure that our child is safe. And sometimes we sacrifice the relationship for it. But if it's not a crisis, my personal approach and my, my personal recommendation is to always prioritize the relationship and make sure that we're doing what we can to strengthen the relationship over time. Because when the relationship with our child is good, everything becomes easier. Uh, every aspect of parenting becomes easier when their relationship is good. And so today we're talking about low intensity situations, just kind of daily, right? You meet your kid after school or after daycare or after they come back from college, whatever it is, right? But you meet them uh, and nobody's especially upset. We're talking about how, how we can, what we can do in those situations to, to create more conversation. The main point that I wanna say for people who don't have a lot of time or for don't have a lot of concentration in them right now, uh, the main thing that I hope you take away is that none of this is a trick. The idea is that you really just be curious about your kid and want to hear about how your kid is doing and be humble. Think about your kid as your teacher, right? You're trying to learn from your kid about your kid's life. That's really the, the main point. Later, you know, we have smart things to say and we have wisdom to share with them. Yes, and all these things are very important. But start from, from just listening, just being humble, wanting to hear who your kid is. What is your kid doing? What's happening in your kid's life? What's it like to be your kid? Let that be the, the leading thought. Okay, so that was the bottom line. Now we'll go into a little bit of details about how to do all of that. The framework that I'm working from um, is, is the relational bank account. And the idea is that you have sort of like a bank account of goodwill with your child. And the more goodwill that your child has toward you, like I said before, everything becomes easier, right? Your kid trusts you more and is more honest with you and will be more vulnerable and tell you about embarrassing or maybe even um, things that could get your kid into trouble normally. Um, we'll put more effort into requests that you make. We'll forgive you when you make mistakes. All the good things come from having more goodwill. Part of this is 
this kind of openness and the desire to share with you. And this is why a lot of what I'll talk about today is about building goodwill through these kinds of interactions so that your child feels comfortable sharing with you and wants to share with you. In the big picture, the way that you deposit, make deposits into this uh, relational bank account is when you show your kid care or respect. It's, it's very simple, right? So if, if you're doing something that your kid interprets as, oh, my parent cares about me, and your kid feels that way, not, not when you know you're doing something because you care about your kid, but your kid believes this means that you care about them in a way that they can understand uh, or respect toward them. And the way that we make withdrawals is basically by showing them that you don't care or that you don't respect them or if you ask them to, to inconvenience themselves for you, which is fine. This is something we do in relationships all the time. We ask the other person to do things for us that they would normally do, but we just wanna be mindful not to have more withdrawals and deposits, right? We always want to be improving the relationship. And one way to check where you are with your kid, uh, you know, how much goodwill does your kid have toward you right now is find yourself on this scale uh, where at the high end, this is fantasy land, right? Uh, this is, if your kid has a lot of goodwill towards you, relational balance is really high. Uh, account balance is really high. Your kid spontaneously goes out of her way to be helpful to you, right? This is like serving you meals in bed, washing all the dishes before you get home, you know, just the, the dream life. Um, somewhere in the middle there is when your child cooperates really with no, no special problem with everything that you ask or almost everything that you ask requires minimal nudging. Everything feels pretty harmonious and pretty easy uh, with your child. Low account balance is when you need to, there's friction, right? You try to get your kid to do something, you make a request and your kid takes a lot of nudging and moving and prodding. Um, that means that your kid is not, not eager to, to cooperate, right? So low account balance. Um, and there's a risk there if the account balance is low and you force your kid to uh, do the thing that you're requiring, there's a risk that you'll go into overdraft. And when you have a negative account balance, that looks basically like the opposite of a very high account balance. Oops. Right. So uh, instead of doing things for you spontaneously and thinking, how can I make my parents' life easier? Uh, your kid instead sits there and thinks, literally, how can I make my parent upset? Uh, how can I make them feel worse and more annoyed? Um, that's a place we never want to go, of course. And so that's one reason. There are many reasons, but that's one reason why if you see lack of cooperation from your kid, be very careful about forcing your kid to do the thing. If it's not absolutely critical that this thing happen, right, you're on the brink, I would say, um, of having a problematic relationship. So that's a time to think about what is very important and where can I work to start re-establishing the relationship and, and let go a little bit of demands for a little bit is how I see it. Um, for the sake of time, we're not, we're not, I'm not going to spend time on this, but this is an example, just, just lots of different things you can be doing during the course of the day. And each of those is like a small deposit, right? 50 cents into the relational account balance, right? But these are things that you can be doing throughout the day, all day, You'll have the slide later if you want, but the main point of this is that these are a lot of daily small things that you could be doing essentially all the time. And they, they do amazing things to relationships when you just remember to say thank you, to praise, to notice them, to listen without giving advice, to check in and see how they're doing, um, to respect their boundaries, to speak with them and respectfully and in a pleasant tone of voice, just basic things. Um, same as you would treat really anybody else important in your life. Okay, specifically regarding how to have uh, nice conversations with your kids and, and how to get them to talk with you more. These are the things that I'll talk about today, all very briefly. One is about just asking good questions that encourage them to talk more, listening a lot and not jumping into immediately telling them what they should be doing differently than what they're doing now, consulting with them and asking for their advice. Uh, this is like even and including from a very young age, taking their opinions into consideration and showing them that we're taking their opinions into consideration, and then learning from them, really seeking to learn from them. Um, and, and lastly, respecting their boundaries. Sometimes they don't want to talk and it's okay. And we, we end up making the relationship worse when we force them to talk with us or when we follow them from room to room and keep asking questions. So a little more in detail. Um, Open-ended questions. Oh. Why are we repeating this? Sorry. 
So to ask open-ended questions, you need to know some things about your kids, right? And, and it's good to just check how plugged in are you into your kid's life, right? Can you name your kid's friends? Do you know how your child likes to feel? Does your child like to feel smart or strong or popular? Or uh, uh, does your child like to feel humble? Does your child like to feel uh, uh, unintimidating, right? Everybody's different. What does your child like thinking about and doing? What does your child really enjoy? What's your child looking forward to right now? These are all things that you, you probably know, right? But each of those is an important conversation starter for your child, right? So sort of check, check how plugged in are you into life. And if, if you're not, then you can, into your kid's life, I mean. And if you're not, you can, of course, ask your child about all of these things. And when you ask, the goal is to ask open-ended questions. So the goal is to ask questions that are hard to answer with one word, right? So yeah, examples. Well, before the examples, open, closed, typically people say, don't ask questions that can be answered by yes or no. I think of it more as a one word question in general. Um, and think for a second before you ask the question, there's probably a different way to ask it that elicits more information. So instead of saying, how was school? which is universally answered by fine. Um, see if you can think about something that you know is happening again, that they were looking forward to or worrying about or whatever, and just ask about the thing, right? If they are really into their science class, what'd you learn about today in science? Or if you know they were worried about a friend who was sick and, and you said, did you see Julian today? They say yes or no, but you can ask, how did it go? And, you know, did he come today? Did you play? Did you have the thing that you were talking about? And, by demonstrating this kind of involvement in your kid's life, this also is, is an opener, right? The ability to follow up on previous conversation. So aiming for open-ended questions is, is the, main, the main tip here. The other, oh, are we going, okay. The other is listening. Once they start talking, just stay out of their way. So we, we all have a tendency to, to really uh, um, jump in and give advice to our kids and tell them what's a good thing to do and say, oh, that's good or that's bad or, oh, we, you know, you should try doing something. And that's very off-putting if they're trying to, to tell a story, right? So the goal is to just stay out of their way. Um, WIG, WIG is, a, is an acronym for what I got. It's a, kind of a paraphrasing technique that I teach sometimes. We don't, we don't need to go over it. I mean, the, the basics, is you paraphrase, right? The, if they say, if, the, if you ask, how, was, how did it go with, with Julian in volleyball? And they say, oh, uh, Julian was really weird today and he never passed to me and, you know, I feel like he kind of ignored me, then rather than immediately going into, well, do you think you hurt his feelings or rather than saying, oh, you should go talk to him or go talk to the teacher or do you want me to talk with his dad or do, right, instead of all of these things, just to say back, just say, wow, so he, you felt like he really ignored you the whole time and they'll just keep talking when you do that, right, you, you just need to say back what you understood and they'll keep going because they're no longer fighting you when they're trying to tell their story. It's a, it's a tiny thing, but it's so impactful in getting people to continue talking. So one, ask open-ended questions just to get them going. And once they're going, just say back what they're saying as much as possible and see, see how they keep going rather than intervening and trying to change the story. Oh, I think it loaded every time. I'm sorry, I made a mistake when I built this. So later is uh, consulting. Ask for your kids' opinions. You can do this when they're two. You can do this when they're 20 uh and and older as well but if the family is going to have dinner it's you know ask what shall we all have and if there are multiple kids ask everybody what they would like but see if you can decide together if you're about to take a day trip figure out what you want to be doing together uh and what they want to do if you're going to buy a car and you're thinking about it right introduce it it's not that they decide everything but they get a voice. That's a big deal for them to feel like they have a voice encourages them to talk more, even about small things, right? So as much as possible, ask for their opinions, ask for their advice. If you can bring to them your own questions, right? If something weird is going on at work and you're able to explain it in a way that is kind of at their developmental stage, you can just share basically what's going on. Say, what do you think? And they might give totally nonsense advice, or they might give really good advice. We, we never know, right? But even if their advice is totally nonsense, just their sense that you're involving them then has them reciprocating, wanting to involve you, right? You're modeling now, coming to each other with thoughts and questions and ideas, right? So making this relationship two-directional, not just 
them telling you all the time and you them sharing with you all the time and you telling them what to do right but rather have it feel more two-way really encourages them to open up as well um uh, right because to to ask them to to ask them for their opinions is a big sign of respect, right? I'm just, I wanted to recall this model again because it's a big deposit when you come to a child and say, hey, what do you think about this thing that I'm facing? I'd love to, you know, hear how you're thinking about this. What's, what's your opinion, right? It's an enormous show of respect, which builds a lot of goodwill, which then translates into all of these other things and encourage them to connect with you more. Being curious, um, this is, I mean, we're, we're approaching the end, so I'm, I'm kind of going back to the bottom line point. The, the goal is really just to try to learn about your child, right? Because you are curious about them and just refraining from having ulterior motives, right? The goal is not to get them to talk so you can give them advice about something else or so you can do anything else, uh, you know, monitor a specific thing that you want. They have something they wanna talk about, listen to them about this thing, right? That's what they care about, that's what matters. Right, at least some of the conversations, make sure that they're leading the conversations and they're about what they want. Just learn from them. And then lastly, and then lastly, um, again, another show of respect, which is just not nagging. If, if they don't feel like talking, you can say, looks like you don't really wanna talk right now. That's okay. I'd love to hear, you know, when, when you wanna tell me, I'll be, in the living room, or that's fine, you know, maybe, you know, at dinner, or they might say, oh, now is not a good time. I need to go, you know, meet my friends. And you might say, okay, when, when's a good time to talk and follow their lead or just say, that's fine. You don't, we don't have to talk, right? Because maybe you picked a topic that is for them uncomfortable still, right? Maybe the, the relationship is not strong enough for them to voluntarily come and talk about this particular topic, right? And you need to build some credit in the relationship with them. Yeah. Um, but the main the main point here is just not to nag. Um, respect their boundaries. It's it's a very important show of respect, which again itself builds the relationship, uh, makes it stronger, and makes them more likely to to come to you. Okay. So these were all of the tips. Let me ask Scully. I'll just again show them one more time and go through them. So start by asking open-ended questions about things that your child cares about not that you care about, that, that you know your child cares about. And then listen, once your child starts talking, just don't, don't do anything other than listen and say back what you hear. And that's it, no advice, no interpretations, no judgments, just listen and just see how they keep talking. Because people love being heard, including kids. Um, ask for their opinions and ask for their viewpoints and ask for their advice as much as you can. That shows respect and it models sharing. Right? So share with them and they will share with you. They learn to behave from you mostly. Right? So share with them at a level that they can understand and then they'll share with you. Seek to learn from them whatever it is they want to teach you, not necessarily what you want to know about. And then if they say no, that's okay. You, know, you have many days to talk with them. If it's not today, it'll be, it'll be another day. But pushing through is, is, ends up being a, a withdrawal. Okay. Um, 